Hey everyone, welcome to Crucible Radio. This is Andrew, the engineer and producer of the show. Birds, Bones, and Swain are gone this week. They are enjoying time with their families and uh, reading in the new year. So uh, whether you're listening to this on New Year's Eve or it's already the new year, 2019 is upon us. And so I think it'd be fun for us to sit back and look back at the year of 2018 and little small chunks, some some highlights from the show. And I actually have collected a nice little fun assortment of outtakes that didn't make it into the show, obviously, that we'll have at the end. So sit back, enjoy, and let's uh, pick a few fun moments from this year and kind of uh, reminisce in uh, the year of 2018 in the Crucible Radio world. First one I want to highlight is from the Bungie episode or the dual Bungie episodes we had back in June. It was just after Warmind came out and we were on the cusp of the announcement of Forsaken and had no idea what was coming our way as far as Destiny goes. And, uh, you know, Bungie giving us little teases of what was coming in the future. We were all just very excited about it. It was a really fun episode. And so we came up with the idea of a grind rank for, for competitive, something that you could play and see a bar move up that wasn't fixed to your skill because fixed skill systems, they figure you out within like 10 games and then there's not a whole lot of movement. And I think that was, for me, that's like one of the most depressing parts of Overwatch is when you get into a game and you work really hard to win and you get two points and it's because you were supposed to (laughs) win and it's because it figured out your skill. And like within the first 10 games of a season, you could be done. I didn't, I didn't love that. Like, the thing that's fun about Destiny is logging in every night and making progress towards a thing. And then um, I had this crazy idea to, to like, we, well, we should get, like, a gun. And I worked with Grant Mackay on, and Victor Anderson. Those guys, like, we, we talked about the goals, and those guys came up with something that was fucking awesome. And it was way better than I thought it would ever be. If you really like the way the game's playing now, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not wrong. Like, it's we're it's we're gonna change it. Like, it's gonna it's gonna evolve pretty quick, pretty hard in the in the fairly near future. And so, yeah. So maybe for the for the players who want more of a change, I would say uh, stay tuned. And for the players who are really happy right now. Um, Thank you. And uh, also keep stay it, tuned. keep it. Yes. Yeah, also yeah. stay tuned. Like it's the same team is building this stuff. And, and we have, we have your experience in mind. We have your desires and, and your All play style your in, mind. in mind. We're trying to collectively, yeah. we're trying to make it as make good. It great for everybody. As good as it could possibly be. Yeah. Just a couple weeks after that episode, we actually all assembled in Tampa for Guardian Con 2018. And it was a fun time. It was a crazy, crazy trip for a lot of us. And uh, yeah, we don't need to talk about it, but I did get arrested on the way down. That's a story for a different day. But anyway, it's all good. Don't worry about me. Everything's fine. But we had a great, great, great weekend. It was a weekend full of uh, hangs, alcohol, (laughs) Uh, lots of alcohol and um, just catching up with with fans and crew of the show and just having just a good old time. And we ended up recording a live episode in our Airbnb where we did a couples game between the hosts, which all brought their significant others. We had Mike the Iron moderate that show and it was a really, really, really good time. So here's a snippet from that episode and definitely one of my favorites. It's so... I mean, there's barely anything Destiny related at all in the episode, but if you're a fan of the show and been listening for a long time, I think you'd get a really, really good laugh out of this entire episode. And check it out on YouTube as well. We actually have like a live video recording of it as well. Alex, what's Bones' favorite beer slash alcoholic drink? He doesn't drink beer. Is that if that's a bonus? Beer part. slash alcoholic oh. drink. Yeah. It would be whiskey or bourbon, and if it's like a actual drink, it would be an old fashioned, hundred percent oh. locked in. Wow. Oh, old fashioned is good. Eugenie? She's calling you an alcohol. Whiskey yes. on the rocks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kelly? His taste fluctuates so much. Like right now, he really likes ciders for some reason. The real answer is marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 
Wait, can I change we're, my we're answer? We're suddenly recording this from, where is it, like, uh, which Colorado. state? Colorado. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is actually Guardian Con Colorado edition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it Swain? No. <laughs> <laughs> I went with the first thing I heard, because I was... I was smoking my <laughs> so Can I get a point beer? for that? It's I mean, beer, and it was Shiner Bot. Shut get the fuck. That's a point. All he does is smoke weed, everyone. I'm giving I'm giving you a point for that. I'm getting dragged. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bones. I said bourbon on the rocks. I do love an old fashioned, but you were right. I, 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 I'm, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, points, that's yeah. points, that's yeah. points. Yeah. I'll take two I points found out what bourbon was tonight. <laughs> but. I like to think of myself as someone who likes bourbon on the rocks, yeah. but I just like cheap bloggers. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not even close. Okay. So. Yes. Eugenie, yes. See, this is a good question, actually. Okay. If you two won the lottery, what would be the first thing Hot tub. that you would... And... <laughs> the question was if you two, but I guess you answered. Are you, uh, is the answer uh, is the answer for the person or for the couple? It's for the couple. For the couple. So the couple would buy a hot tub first. Okay. Okay. I just want to. I'm sorry. I feel like you're judging us. Hmm? No, I no, I no. I'm just uh, I'm just comparing. Just comparing. Okay, Alex, what would you yes. buy first? What would we what would buy? you buy first? The royal. The royal you. I know a thing or two well, about Wales. We just moved into a place together and we. Let's see, we bought a couch. <laughs> we don't. Mm, uh, this, is, this was a tough answer, answer a because. Because we just bought a couch. This is a lottery? We're going to buy a couch. I, yeah. I like, it's free money. This. You get a lot of free money. This. What do you buy? Oh, you messed up on it? Alright, I could just say something cool then. Um, I would say, like, a new car. A new? An exotic bird. <laughs> I'm gonna go plane tickets. Is that too vague? No. Like no. A trip. No. All right. Yeah. Like a trip. Probably New Zealand. Okay. Hobbiton, okay. more specifically. Okay. That's. I mean, let me just write that down. <laughs> if I get extra points for being that specific, then Hobbiton. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I, I think. That. I think you'll find out whether you get. Those kind of points <laughs> at the moment, Swain. So now, <laughs> Swain. A house with a pool. Mm. Oh, come. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay because because Bones are has totally sick. got it, and it yeah. is. And we um, saw that house with a pool near our house. Yeah. Sorry. Go. This was no. This I said I botched this because we literally just bought a beautiful couch and it's like the coolest thing I've ever purchased. So I feel like had you asked, asked us this a week ago, uh -huh. we would have had the perfect couch. answer. So I said bar cart because it was like the last cool <laughs> thing we were looking at. <laughs> we would buy it. We would buy it first. We wouldn't be the only thing we bought. I'm not saying we're burying the rest of the money in the dirt. We would just get that first because we were like, hey, we were just looking at that. All the money would not on the be getting a bar cart first. I would be. A very expensive bar cart. Yeah, it would be. It would be made out of actual, like, bars. Yeah. Oh, the class. Oh, yes! We've got a yes at the door. Hey! Could you grab me a beer? Uh, okay. <laughs> I want to change I my answer because I just <laughs> gave like. Uh, and, uh, PDR on the first uh, I, I I gave the. I she knows me better than I would do. Totally be a hot tub. I just said pay off the mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a really so good one. Yeah. Yeah. We don't even have a mortgage. Give a dollar, Ralph. Pull the pool. Fuck. Just his half. I don't want a bar cart. <laughs> I don't either okay. now. And not too much longer after that Guardian Con trip, we were hyped for Forsaken and it released on September 4th. And we got a nice little string of guests to come on and chat about Forsaken and what's changed, what was new, and even got to reunite with an old pal from the show that's been on the show many times, Dr. Lupo. Here's a clip from that episode. You might remember him from uh, his appearance on this show all the and way back only on this episode show. and only this show. <laughs> 
all the way back to episode 34. We got a message from Deej. He's like, hey, this is a small time creator. Maybe you should give him a little bump. And since then, he's received over 200 more followers on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, uh, 200 was- <laughs> and beyond. So the numbers have really skyrocketed. And who and, and after 200, we stopped counting. Uh, please welcome back to the show after a long break, Dr. Lupo. Hi, that's me. Hello, oh, guys. Hey, buddy. Uh, Bonzi clearly did his research. Thirty-four. Somebody was clicking, clicking the back button. <laughs> yeah, I went through. The way yeah, I went machine. one episode at a time, all the way until the first one. But I figured it out. You want to know what's funny is I, I can tell you exactly when because I still, to this day, have the exclamation point CR command in my channel. Crucible Radio <laughs> episode thirty-four. It changes good. Crucible Radio episode sixty-eight. A banner review. Oh yeah, that's me, boys. I hold on to those, man, because it's like uh, you, you guys. We, I mean, I've mentioned a million times, but you were the first podcast. You were my you. You were my first. Wait, oh my Everyone god, remembers their first too. That means so much <laughs> to us. So you know, it was good. It felt pretty good. Was it good for you? It was good for me. I, it, it yeah, was it was pretty for us. Pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. Why am I, I have a question. Uh, when you first came on episode thirty-four, we spent some time uh, talking about your your strange, strange choice to use a mouse and keyboard in Destiny, <laughs> yeah, and dude. probably that's what explained why everyone hated you so much. Yeah, everybody. And yet hates you're me. still using it, and everyone else is doing mouse and keyboard. Yeah. How do you explain it now? I mean, I'm I I made it so that it was accepted. You know, it's, it was uh, it was all me, dude. All me. No, it. The trailblazer. I, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that everybody that's cheating, like I was back then, is uh, able to cheat openly. No, that's not. That's not true. <laughs> that's before somebody's like, "Wow, I told you, dude." Three years. Ago, look, <laughs> let me pull up the Twitch logs. Look right here. I said, "Lupo, you're gonna get banned, you nerd." See, I pointed out right there that he was cheating. <laughs> I told uh-huh. you. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, it's, it's still it's not. It's 2018 still, now. People are using Wii controllers. They're playing Destiny with the uh, with the Donkey Konga pads. I saw a guy play Overwatch on a baguette once. So <laughs> Dude, he, was, he, he was playing Widowmaker, and in the middle of it, he took a bite of it. Did you see that? That was amazing. <laughs> That's actually uh, in Overwatch canon. Widowmaker takes a bite every time she gets killed. He played PUBG with a an actual frying pan too. Did you see that? Same guy. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> In the very next week, we actually had True Vanguard on, and he shocked us all with his bit on sidearms and about how much fun he was having with sidearms. And, you know, not the most popular choice, but I think it was a really, really cool uh, clip from that episode. Check it out. And uh, another good option is sidearms. And I, I have done a lot of sniper plus sidearm combo in Forsaken, and I'm, I'm in love. So... And I think some th- people say sidearms <laughs> better than shotguns. What? Now, who would go and do a crazy <laughs> thing like that? Somebody who wants to get clicks and views on YouTube. That sounds, <laughs> sounds like some money hungry piece of crap. <laughs> yep. I, I clicked. I clicked. Uh-huh. I clicked. I got gotcha. you. Um, Thanks for your money. It, it worked. Well, so um, I'm guessing part of uh, part of what's required to make that uh, a statement that's even in the ballpark is not holding forward continuously. Mm-hmm. Um, but sort of. Like, let's talk about sidearms. I do want to come back to snipers, but um, sort of in in terms of this pairing, what is it that you like about them? Why are, why are they going to work this season? Sidearms, um, let me first and foremost just say this, um, and I did say this in the video. That claim is is for quick play. It's for standard crucible. It's not for comp. The comp meta is a, is a different atmosphere, and it plays out differently than quick play. And um, so that that doesn't necessarily always apply there. But... For the overwhelming majority of people who are going to be spending most of their time in quick play, I think that sidearms are a phenomenal choice. And I would take a great sidearm over a great shoddy personally, um, you know, nine out of ten times. So the reason being, A, you will never encounter, well not, I suppose I can't say never. You will much less frequently encounter an ammo drought. So primary ammo, a little bit easier to come by. You have a lot more of it. And so I find myself racking up we ran out of metals a lot more easily because I'm not running into ammo droughts as often. So uh, sidearms are also really, really accurate from the air. And sometimes you might find that your shotgun is just blanking or things, especially slug shotties, their inner accuracy is hot garbo. 
and uh, it can be infuriating <laughs> sometimes when you're like, I don't, I don't understand where this bullet or where the slug could have gone. The barrel's pointed straight at the guy, unless it sh- shot out the side of the barrel. I don't know. But um, sidearms are um, by by design a lot more accurate from the air, so you can use your vertical space, juke people, bait corners, bait doorways a lot more effectively with a sidearm than you can with a shotgun, in my opinion. And um, they also have some other interesting perks that you can you can chain together to make for some really nice multi kills that sometimes you just can't do with a shotgun because with a shotgun half the time you've got one or two um, you know shots in the chamber <laughs> you know you you don't have a ton of buckshot to work with so you may get one kill with two shots or two kills with two shots and then you gotta like clumsily run over the bodies while the third guy's pushing you and you're trying to like shove the buckshot back up and you know chamber <laughs> the round cock the thing right. <laughs> But with sidearms, their reload speed is fantastic, right? That's just one of the things that innately they do well. They reload really, really fast. So that can mean that you can do things like kill clip or rampage. And then you can just absolutely start melting people. And and I have just had so many moments where I just put the controller down and I put my hands in my hair like, oh my gosh, that was awesome. Because <laughs> like, I'll play like three, four, five people in a row and you're like, that was so much freaking fun. And sometimes with a shotgun, you just... Like I said, it's just a little bit more clumsy. It's a little bit more awkward because you, you have this awkward long reload animation thing that you got to do. And then they also don't have very good handling speed. So sometimes you, you pull it up, you're pulling the trigger, and it's like, it's not shooting yet. And then you cry because you die. So um, I just I just like the, the sort of ceiling of things that you can do with a sidearm more than what you can do with a shotgun. And rounding out one of my favorite interviews, and I'm sure it was probably Bird's favorite because we all know what Bird's thinks of Cami Cakes. He loves Cami Cakes. Uh, yeah, we have Cami Cakes talking about double primaries in this clip and how they're still viable in a post Forsaken world. Cami, tell me that double primary is still viable. Well, tell everybody. Absolutely. We have a strategy on my team called Pass the Ball to the Italian. <laughs> <laughs> what? Go on. Have you ever seen the movie Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell? I feel like I have once. Okay, well, I, I'll give you like the summary uh, as far as this part goes. So Will Ferrell is coaching his child's soccer team, and his, his soccer team sucks. And so they get some muscle on the team. They get these Italian immigrant boys to play. And their only strategy is to pass the ball to the Italians so the Italians can score. And this gets them to like the finals of the soccer tournament. <laughs> and so this is the strategy. And as you can imagine, pass the ball to the Italians means feed whoever is really, really good with a special weapon on your team infinity ammo. Because everybody's <laughs> going to be dropping special. And that's the problem with running double primary is that even though you kill them and you don't give them special, if you're too effective and kill them like in their spawn, they're able to pick up their own special ammo off their corpse. <laughs> but if you have one Italian to pass the ball to, he can even just start emptying the ammo just so they can't have it. Gotcha. Is that person going to be running, you know, double shotguns or, or you know, a shotgun and a sniper? You like- actually can run that. And I've been experimenting with shotgun snipe, snipe cold heart, and all these like really weird setups even grenade launchers and stuff you can mix in there. But I think that devil primary and even devil special have situational uh, benefits. Sturm and Drang hits, hits like a truck. I mean, with the uh, inertia override and empowering riff, you can do some dirty, dirty things with it. But the pass the ball to the Italian works really well with rapid fire weapons because you have so much ammo. You can straight disrespect, empty an entire mag of shotgun or snipe on one person and not even be at a disadvantage. <laughs> I mean, outside of that case, right? Like, is there a double primary loadout that's viable when you're solo queuing, when you're in rumble? Or is it? are you better off there with, with something that can one-hit kill? I think you can uh, run with a double primary in rumble, especially if someone's running rampant with the shotgun. But it's kind of dependent on everyone else to give them a fair fight, right? If you have weak players with one strong player in the lobby, he's probably still going to have ammo forever. But if everyone's on a real, like, even skill level, I think that a double primary in there might throw off their entire flow and be like, where's my shotgun ammo? You're supposed to give me it. I need it. Then you spawn up near near them and you're like, I got you for three minutes. (laughs) And that's the last clip we're going to feature from our little, you know, some moments from 2018. Uh, There were some really good episodes this year. Um, Some of them I didn't even pull clips from, but the solo episodes that we had, like the High on Birds episode and then the one that 
as Swain had with Sporkside Steve. And then uh, Bones actually previewed and premiered Gaming in Hell here on the show. Just so many cool episodes uh, spanning the entire year. We would like to thank you for listening to the show. It's been a really, really fun ride the last few years. And through the ups and downs of Destiny, what's been really great, at least for me, with this show is the community of people. Um, this, This show brings together a lot of great people. I've met some dear friends through this show. I hope we get to do more of that next year, whether we're playing online, PS4, Xbox, PC, whether we're hanging out at Guardian Con or just running to each other somewhere in the wild. Uh, I hope you all have a great year in which I can actually plug myself now. This is kind of fun. I am Andrew. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew J underscore Gomez. And uh, same thing with Instagram and all that good stuff. I produce music here in Nashville and also the Crucible Radio Show. And as promised, here are some outtakes, about 10 minutes worth of outtakes from this year. Have a happy new year, everyone. Have a safe beginning of the year and we'll see you in the Crucible. You know, we've been watching this TV show, uh, American Gods, Mm -hmm. and it's on stars, which means that no one has seen it except for contacts. (laughs) (laughs) Because the only channels contacts get are Fireplace and Stars, apparently. And it's like, it's a high-budget premium cable show, and it's also, like, kind of trashy. Like, it's just, it's just, it's not... It's enjoyable. It's not great, but it's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do have to give them credit. Very, uh, I, I think probably the best modern depiction of a leprechaun I've ever seen. Wow. Yeah, he's not six inches tall. He's just like, uh, he's porn stash from Orange is New Black. It works. Surprisingly, that does very little to make me want to watch the show. But <laughs> hey, credit where credit <laughs> is due. <laughs> Yeah, this is not a recommendation. This is me just stating the fact that I've watched it and that if you need to <laughs> watch something, it, it technically qualifies. That's the something. tagline for the show. American Gods. It does one thing, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Fair portrayal of Leprechaun. Yeah. Man, I always thought I could do uh, I could do like that, that uh, movie trailer voice. Like, I could have done that the, if I wanted. In a world. In a world. Come on, golden in a world. No, I in a world, you don't have where the. It's just bones and sweat. Deep. In a, in a world where it's only birds and swain and bones. Well, he wasn't there, Whoa. but they recorded a podcast anyways, <laughs> because the show must go on. Also, it's and really also, late on Saturday night. Yes, and they. Just figured, let's roll with it. Oh, you, man, you're pushing me out of my comfort zone. I would just be the high-pitched in a world guy. It would be fine. Everyone, everyone like it. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Don't discriminate, man. I got I got trailer, movie trailer voice. You should probably just hire someone on Fiverr for this. <laughs> you just want to outsource everything. Testing, testing. <clears throat> oh, God. Oh, God. Hi. Sure glad we invited Josh. This is great. This is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a got yeah, one tweet to go. <laughs> People like that Twitter co- content. <coughs> gotta have my content. Excuse the. Yep. Got a slight cold. That's why I'm rubbing Josh right now. He actually is rubbing me. It's for, it's for good luck. <laughs> yeah. It's totally. uh, Bones, you recording? I'm recording. Swain, you recording? Yeah, I'm recording. All right. So we are going to do the Ceremonial Crucible Radio Count-In. This is how we line up our audio tracks. Uh, Noose, how about you do it? You know the drill. I do. Um, count to, out loud to five. One, two, three, four, five. Count along with me as best you can. It'll be weird. It helps to start on two. We'll give it a shot. Here we go. One, two, two three, four, five. 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 Not bad. I'm so good Not at that. Not bad. Ooh, that's Ooh, yeah. I'm so good at <laughs> Um, okay, uh, we'll do like the intro and the outro on our own time. Uh, Bones, do you want to kick us off? Um, sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing for me to do. All oh, right. Hold on. Let me actually, let, let, I'll, I'll do the first question just going down the list. Um, this is a question for all of you. Uh, test question. Please ignore. <laughs> so mad that the joke was wow. so flat. Yeah. <laughs> 
damn you bones. You said they would think that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I said I, I would think it was funny. For no, 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 we act on command. You yeah. said ignore. I, I threw it out <laughs> instantly. I, I said I would think it was funny, and I did. <laughs> that was okay. my phone. Kevin literally just threw his phone. phone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, your leader <laughs> in, in, in disappointment. Rage. He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> okay. All right. In all seriousness, welcome to um, one of many, many, I am surely convinced will be an informative, <laughs> nope. fantastic. Deli- <laughs> nope. <laughs> Dude, you, you killed that. Dude. That was awesome. This I was, was my first I was time here. Go I was impressed. like a minute. I was going to go for a very long time. Welcome, everybody, to Casper Radio, to Harry's Razor Radio, where we razor the razors. It's Bones and Birds in the Crucible and some asshole named Swain. They're here to shill and da da da. There is and- a lack of mattress podcasts, and we decided to fill that void. Here's Mattress Radio. <laughs> oh, I just realized what song I was doing. Birds, did you catch it? Dun, 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 dun. No, it's uh, it, it morphed into, I don't know why, but today seems like it's going to be a great day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my parents can't say we were wrong about you, Dennis. Can we go to Spain? We're going to run with the bulls. <laughs> now I'm over here. Now I'm over the tree. <laughs> no, he's on drugs. Why would you <laughs> diss me? I thought I you thought were you my, my homies. homies. <laughs> well, well, right, I should spend well, more time with my to, kid. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to do an opening anymore. We can just go into the show. Yeah, I know. We can just whatever start talking already. whenever this I This is stop. just good uh, outtake content. Hi, uh-huh. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me sporadically sing an old, old <laughs> SNL digital short. You're welcome, fans. Topical. Hey, we're just big fans of the children's monthly mail order sticker animal series called Zoo Books. <laughs> Get a lot of material from there. Hold on, hold on. Joke's coming. Joke's coming. Joke's coming. Almost here. Is it though? Almost here. I'm not going to hold my breath. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) Oh, this is like, I like that. Like, this is my thing. Like (laughs) searching for things to Google and then editing the page HTML (laughs) to (laughs) <laughs> replace things with the phrase eat a butt or <laughs> bitches question mark hi Ray um, you gonna be on the show hey cat you gonna be on the show <laughs> <laughs> but this is also the first <coughs> <coughs> oh Jesus God <laughs> I knew I was running out of, of air there before the cough um, Andrew you can cut that out no one needs to hear that um Oh, thank you for that Bruno Mars tweet, by the way. <laughs> Confirms my suspicion. Like, I, I, I mark my words. Bruno Mars does not know who the current president is. <laughs> he doesn't know who the last three presidents have been. He doesn't know that there's channels on the TV where you can find this stuff out. He lives in a world where these things are just not even concerns. <laughs> I mean... Bruno Mars has not seen paper money in 15 years. <laughs> Why would he need to? He just he just asked Julio to pull the shrimp filled jet around and Julio just makes it happen. I just want to say that there is a interview with Bruno Mars where he said that the hardest part of his art and what he does is writing lyrics. And then after that, I'd love to read this line from Finesse featuring Cardi B. Blame it on my confidence. Oh, blame it on your measurements. Shut that shit down on site. That's right. <laughs> hardest part of his life. That's the yep. hardest part. Yep. Just cranking these masterpieces out one after Very another. Very difficult to do. 
Andrew, if you decide to use that for an outtake or something, let let it be stated that I love Bruno Mars. <laughs> I think it is he he's our our, our watered down skim milk Michael Jackson. He's an absolute national <laughs> treasure. I just also this. think. He might be the most basic bitch to ever have existed. <laughs> Bruno Mars thinks inches and centimeters are the same thing. <laughs> uh, one time somebody gave uh, Bruno Mars a piece of sushi that was shaped like a square, and he flipped the platter over because that's not sushi. <laughs> sushi is round. Bruno Mars doesn't know that people live in houses smaller than eight bedrooms. Mm-hmm. Bruno Mars has been carried to bed by his manservant Julio every single night for the past 15 years. Uh, Bruno Mars thinks strawberry champagne is the pinnacle of fancy living. (laughs) And like, who are we to judge, honestly? He's Bruno fucking Mars. Bruno Mars thinks that the earth is round because he's not a fucking idiot. Credit where credit is due. One, two, uh, uh, two, uh, what? Uh, 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 three, two, three, five, five. I'm glad it. I'm glad it went that way. Uh, All right, for realsies. Here we go. Let's. Uh, can we do the the intro as like we're talking about Hammond? The hamster. Okay. hamster like, whoa, 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 whoa. This yep. intro is getting really expensive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So I I haven't seen, I only saw the one gif you guys posted. Um, so he's a, a hamster. hamster. Yeah. Yeah. That was experimented on uh-huh. the moon. Like oh, Winston. Sure. So Winston okay. lived on the moon with this hamster, and they're both scientists. I would say that hamster is more of an engineer. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Can't just have a freeloading hamster. When I was a kid, I had a hamster and he was in a ball and then he uh, escaped and he just lived in our walls from that point on. We'd hear him <laughs> scrabbling around like in the walls by my bed at night. Um, and we'd catch little glimpses of him peeking at us through the vents and I assume we eventually died in those walls somewhere. Um, and he's got a grappling hook. Hmm. Mine didn't have a grappling he, hook. He escaped from the moon, so he's a little bit more adventurous than your... Uh- your wall hamster. Is it weird to think that you had a pet that just decided, you know what? That I, you don't own me anymore. I am free. I am my own animal. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.